I think we, we're moving into another generate a, a next version of the industry where I think hiring is really, I mean, if you crack hiring and you've, you've, you've got a huge advantage over any of your competitors, because the difference is if I saw a customer, right, I might have that customer. Maybe I got them on a membership plan, or maybe there's some type of reoccurring commercial relationship. But if I sell or hire the right team member, they might be with me 15, 20 or 30 years. What customer buys from me every day? I've never found one. If you find any, let me know, right? But yeah. like the internal customer, they show up every day. And that's the, I think that's the big benefit that we're talking about. No, that's great. I once heard, um, I think it was the COO of Chipotle say that they're not in the business of selling burritos and food, that they're actually in the business of retaining and advancing like low entry labor. <laughs> Just if we can retain low entry labor, we've done it. <laughs> And that's like their well, biggest challenge is hiring. Just can they keep uh, someone at $12 an hour, $15 an hour employed and to stay there? So um, really interesting. Well, let's dive into a process for hiring. What do you see most construction companies out there doing? What were you doing before this? You kind of already referenced a couple of things, looking for the small contract to see if he'd jump on, posting it out on Craigslist. But what do you, what do you see most people doing? Well, I think the first thing, that starts before you do anything is a, a shift in mindset. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is if I was, if I was standing in front of a group of people and I said, okay, how many of you raise your hand if you want to grow your business, right? Hands go up. Okay. Raise your hand. If you have a revenue goal, you want to grow your business by a certain amount of revenue. You know, you're doing 5 million. You want to go to 10, you're doing 10, you want to go to 20, right? Maybe you're doing a million. You want to go to two. Okay. What's the org chart you have under the current business? Now, what's the org chart you need to support the business growth and revenue that you want to have? Hmm. Now, when I do this in, in real life, the hands go up. People know the revenue that they want to achieve. They have some idea or strategy about what they want to do to achieve that revenue, right? Sales, marketing, business development. Maybe it's a rebrand, right? Maybe it's acquisitions. There's all these different ways. Um, but now you look at that org chart. What is your clear, predictable proven track record plan to fill these positions and how many positions do you need? So it's like we, I equate it to, you know, it's, it's like thinking about a destination that you want to go to. That's your revenue. But like what vehicle and road you're going to take is the employees and the team to support that. And so it starts with a shift of mindset. I think if, if every business owner listening made the owl, their company mascot, they would be way better off. And what I mean by that is if you think of an owl, what does an owl do? It says who, 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 and it can rotate its head all the way around. I think if every business owner spun their head around looking around for who, who, who all the time and the owl became your company mascot, like if you take one thing away from this and, and it becomes that and you ask yourself constantly, who do I need and where can I find them is the follow-up question. I yeah. think your, your business would transform. It's, it's mental real estate first and then we get into like all the things that you can do. But the size of the problem and the size of the opportunity, I think are greatly mm -hmm. underestimated. Man, really, really great. A lot of what we talk about on here, you're just firing off on all cylinders. So I love to hear it. And it sounds like that mindset really, it leads to you thinking about the identity of your company and what you really need. Like who, who do I need? Where can I find them? What are some of the identity pieces? And when I say identity, I kind of mean like for me, uh, vision for your company, like you mentioned revenue goal, where are we going? What are our goals? What's our mission? What are the values that we have? What are our core behaviors we want our employees to embody? How do you go through a discovery of, you know, outlining that business identity with, with your customers as, as, as a consultant? So great question. It starts with an exercise that we, we go through called, would you work for you? <laughs> and nope, it's very simple, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you go online, you pretend you know nothing about your company, and you Google yourself. And you looking at your website, again, as a candidate, so you might have great customer videos. You might have these amazing customer reviews, right? Client reviews. You might have some videos that show the kind of work you do. But remember, I'm looking to work for your company. I'm not looking to buy from your company, right? So it's a completely different messaging. So the, the exercise of would you work for you sets the foundation for is my brand, my hiring brand set up for success? Do I have a video that showcases, you know, other people working here 
with cuts as a testimonial of those people. I've been here 20 years, you know, Matt's a great boss, you know, I can pay him to say that right now. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's that brand, right? Do you have a career page or a, a beautiful page that showcases the benefits? And then once you have that, or while you're looking for that, you get to do the next thing. So here's what, here's what baffles me. I've done this many times in, in, in live events. I'll ask people, how many of you know your competitors? How many of you know that if you bid a job and XYZ company bids it, you'll never get it? Or every time XYZ company bids it, you're going to come in 10% lower because they're, they're that one company that maybe charges a little bit more than you, but you're better, right? Like most business owners, we know our competitors, but what about our hiring competitors? So yeah. if I'm a candidate, right? I'm a, I'm a carpenter and I live in Oklahoma. I just moved there. What am I going to do? What's the journey? So I might go online and say, you know, carpentry, foreman positions, Oklahoma, the city I'm in. Who shows up? Who's competing for that candidate's real estate? Who are your hiring competitors? So these two exercises set the foundation for who are we actually competing against? Because this is a customer that might be with, you know, internal customer. This is the person that might be with you for 10, 20, 30 years. So it's like, how hard would you fight? For a client, if I could guarantee you that client would buy from you every day, you'd you'd have you'd be billboards, we'd be door knock, like whatever you had to do to land that business. But then when yeah. it comes to hiring, most of us, you know, I was guilty of all these things, right? So I'm talking about me here. I didn't know who my hiring competitors were, and then I find out that they've got banner ads, they offer all these benefits that I didn't have. They had these really exciting headlines. You see them on. 27 different job boards. So when you type in a position, it's like they're, they own the whole first page. And then I'm looking at it going, well, gosh, this might explain why I was struggling to hire that, you know, those years back, you can't yeah. find me. And when you do, you don't see anything. Yeah. It's, uh, wh why do you feel like it's so, what for you, why did you overlook it so much? Was it just a, you know, you didn't, you couldn't see your own bald spot thing, or did you feel like they weren't as important? I mean, I, maybe on the East coast, there were a lot more access to masonry. And that, so it wasn't really that big of a challenge. What, what's your what's your take? I, I honestly think for me, it came down to just not. So the mindset of hiring, I remember my dad growing up and, you know, we let somebody go and we replaced him before we got home. Literally. Wow. Right. Like we let him go. He leaves. My dad makes four phone calls. Yeah. yeah be at the job, you know, be at the yard at 530 a.m. Done. The wow. dynamic shifted. But I don't know that the mindset of the business owner has shifted with it. And I think, like, for example, I didn't really, part of what I built with the course and, and with what we do was really about solving my needs and trying to help other business owners because, like, I never saw my dad growing up. My dad was one of the hardest working people you'd ever meet. My dad worked Saturdays, worked Sundays, nights, weekends. I mean, 4 a.m. to 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night every day. And... I just don't think we did. It's one of those things where it's like, it's one of those great mysteries where I don't know why we don't see it. And that's why I joked about the owl is like, if the amount of VC venture capital money going into our field of construction and the first question they're asking, and I know, cause I've consulted with some of these firms is they're, they're acquiring companies based on the people. So if, if both things are true, if I could have a business that runs without me, I need a great team, right? Or if I want to sell my business, the people buying it are predominantly going to look heavily at the org chart. They're going to run background checks. They're going to want to know who the senior leadership team is. They're going to, so it's like, I honestly think part of it is that maybe the big companies don't want to get this out, the real big ones, because, you know, there's such a limited pool. So maybe the small and medium sized business it is. It's like, why would I go out and spill this information to make it more competitive for me? I don't know. 